Hello, this is the numerical class about the collapse conjecture. And um, what we'll be doing in this class is just to try some numerical experiments, just to kind of uh, just play a little bit with it, just play a little bit with the theory and see what numbers we get. It's, it's just try to do some numerics. That's, that's, that's the spirit of it. Okay, so let me change to, so this um, is the, the uh, Mathematica file that I'll be uh, posting on my website, so you can download this and play um, for yourself. So basically what I would do in this, uh, in this uh, lecture is just um, go through the functions are defined here, and also the tests tests that I'm doing here, the numerical tests, and just play a little bit with it, and just tell you uh, how this is working. You can either do entirely new uh, Mathematica file for yourself, or you can just download mine and uh, change it a, a little bit. Okay, so um, let me go back. Let me just check if everything was working. So I guess, yes, I guess you are seeing my screen. Okay. Okay, so everything is working. Right, okay, and you see my face uh, right here, I guess. Um, uh, so, uh, so, okay, so this first I define the collect function, which is defined here in the way that Te has uh, defined, so the way I defined my first lecture. Nothing fancy going on there. Also define the orbit of a uh, an integer, which would be the orbit under the collapse map C. So, you, so uh, basically, I just uh, um, start with a vector, which is just the initial n. So this will be the vector here, and then I just, uh, if it's not one, then I just join the vector with the iteration of the last element of the vector, and I just keep doing this until I get to one. So then you will get the orbit. So all the iterates up to one, if the collects conjecture is true, this function will be finite for every n. Um, um, we also have this uh, uh, sigma function, which is the, the stopping time. So the stopping time is defined as the first k, such that ck of n is less than n. So again, I start with m equals n and k equals zero. And while m is greater or equal than m, n, I just define m equals cm and just keep doing this. So I will run to the iterates until I get the first one. And I keep doing this, adding k more and more here. And I will keep doing this until I get the first iterate and then I return this k. And sigma infinity, which is uh, just the total stopping time, is just the, the orbit, the length of the orbit minus one. So it's easy. There is a parity vector. So let me uh, refresh the definition of the parity vector. So let me go through my notes. So these are my notes that you can download online. Um, and the parity vector is defined somewhere here. So this is the parity vector that we're dealing with. So it's basically just the, you take the orbit and you do mod 2. So percent here in my notes is mod 2. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just taking the orbit here. So I'm computing the orbit again because uh, this, is, this is supposed to be always of length k. So maybe the orbit of n is less than k or bigger than k. So regardless, we need a vector of length k. So I'm, so I'm computing the orbit again in mod 2. So what I'm saying is that uh, 
I can't just take mod 2 of the function O, that, that, that wouldn't work because I want length exactly k. So that's the link, uh, the parity vector that we define in class. That's the lambda function, also that we define in class. So let's see what's the lambda function. Oh, the lambda function is right here. It's just 2 to the minus k and 3 to the s k. And s k is just the sum of the, uh, of, of the parity of of the iterates of the collapse map. That's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just summating the E case. Uh, sorry for the noise, that's my washing my washing uh, machine. Um, um, as you know in with during this uh, virus uh, outbreak I'm doing this uh, this in my home, not in my office. Um, okay, uh, now the, then I define the function whole, which is again defined in my notes. And then I define the coefficient stopping time, which is the first time the lambda is less than 1. Okay. And then I also define, finally, the... Um, uh, the last function here is the tree function, which is not what it is. I didn't define this in any lecture, but it's a nice, uh, you get a nice picture from this. So this is uh, the smallest uh, connected tree coming from the collapse map that contains all the orbits of integers up to m. Okay. So what I do, basically, I say that... Uh, i is connected to j if j equals c of i and so this will be the edge table so zero if it's uh, I put zero as a starting point a starting value but then I'm, I'm going to change this for by to an integer that would mean that if in the j position of this table I get some number l that means that l equals c of j okay and so what I'm doing is just run off through all the integers and whenever I find an edge which is not initialized, which means that it's zero. I then initialize this, this this edge by doing this, and also, but I keep doing this until I initialize all the 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 all the integers in the orbit of J. So I do that here, so so to get a a connected uh, tree, and then in the, in the end I just return. Uh, the tree. Okay. So now we can start doing some tests. Again, if you have any questions about these functions and how these work, you can send me an email or 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 you can just try to figure out for yourself, I don't know. So let's first test the tree. So you know what I mean. Let me compile this function first. Okay, let me test the tree. So that's the trivial tree. So that's the trivial loop, the only loop we think exists, the one-two loop, and I'm always putting one as the root and in the bottom. Okay. So if we do the first ten integers, we get this tree here. We get this tree here, and this tree um, is basically just the, the, the smallest tree containing all the orbits, all the integers in the orbits of the numbers from 1 up to 10. Okay. Let me make this smaller. So you can see one picture. Okay. Then let's crank this up. Let's put a hundred and see what we get. So we start to get the mass. Okay, and this mass can only be seen partially. So you start to get very uh, uh, large numbers. But and the meaning is that, for instance, you have here seven hundred and twenty-eight, 
and 364. So that means that 728 is mapped into 364 and to 182 and so on. So it's always going down. So this is a big orbit here that you see. A very big orbit. Let me see what, what's the point. So the largest orbit here it starts with 97. It's a very big one. It goes all the way down. And then you start to see other or smaller uh, orbits. And then everything eventually goes up to 1. So what you see here is the smallest tree containing all the integers from 1 to 100 and all its iterates as well. Okay. So let's try a larger one. Let's see. Uh, let me put here right. And let me put here like 300. Okay, so now the root, which is 1, is on the right. And you can see it's a very large, you can't, three, okay, you can't even see the numbers. Well, okay, so let me go back. So this is a nice thing to see. So now let's test the collects conjecture. So what I mean by testing, so I will go from the integers, let's say from 2 to a certain number, I put here 2 to 20, which is something like, I think, is something like uh, 300 million. Um, and I just compute the stopping time. And if the stopping time is finite, that means that for all these integers here, the collapse conjecture is true. So let's just see what happens when I do this. It shouldn't take long. Let's see, it's running. Let's see how long it takes. I think 2 to the 20 and it takes something like uh, 20 seconds. Let's see. Yeah, it took like 30, uh, 28 seconds. I'm also timing the thing. So it took 28 seconds. So now we have proven that. So let me put. Uh, so it is true for all j less so you put in 2 to the 20. Okay, so that's what we tested here. Uh, so let me put some small tree here as well just to make things nice. some other testing so let me do this testing with you so I'm just testing all the other functions so I'm putting a equals this number here and um, I'm testing and computing the orbit so let's compute the orbit also I'm computing the stopping time I'm also computing the the coefficient stopping time so these two are supposed to be the same but the conjecture presented in class I'm also computing uh, what is this? This is a table with the with the lambda case up to the stopping time. So you should see all these numbers bigger than one and this less than one. And the, the, the last number less than one. This is the total stopping time, which is the size of this orbit, minus one. This is uh, this final part here. I'm testing if the vector e k, so it's e4, is actually Two to the k periodic. So I'm testing if e4 of something of this a plus uh, a multiple of two to the four equals uh, uh, e4 of this something. 
And here I'm testing if the formula that Terra is presented is true, actually is true. So this is supposed to be, so this last part here, supposed to be equal to uh, C5 applied in this vector A. So let's start with the simple one. Let's start with C7, let's see what happens. So, okay, so you have here the orbit of 7, 7 is mapped to 11, which is mapped to 17, etc. I actually did that uh, in my first class as, a, as an example. Um, then I have uh, um, the stopping time of 7, which happens to be 7. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, exactly. So the 7, so this is this 5 here is C7 applied in 7. It's 5, it's the first one less than 7. So this is this is correct. And then you have also the 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 coefficient stopping time, which is also 7. So if you look here, so this number is bigger than 1, this is bigger than 1, this is bigger than 1, this guy here is um, bigger than 1, this is bigger than 1, this is bigger than 1, and suddenly you get a number which is less than 1, which is exactly uh, the coefficient stopping time. So they match, so the conjecture looks true. We also have sigma infinity, which is the length of the orbit, is 11, so let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, exactly, so it's matching well. Then we have also this testing here. So before we go to this test, uh, we have this final 20, and this means that uh, is this guy, which should be the fifth iterate of the collapse map applied in 7. So it should be 20. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 exactly. So the functions look good. They look like they're doing what they're supposed to do. And also we have this guy here. So let me, uh, so this is supposed to be 0 because this guy here is supposed to be periodic. So if I put 1 here, we get 0 again. So I put 7 you get zero again. If you put 111, you get zero again. So it's supposed to be uh, uh, periodic, and it looks like it is. Okay, so let me test another one. So that by the tree, a big one is supposed to be like a 19. So let me try 19 here. So this is supposed to be 19. Uh, uh, um, uh, so sorry, E4 is supposed to be 4 periodic. Okay. So, okay, so again, this is the orbit 19. The fourth one that already gets below 19, which is the same here, is also the same. The fourth uh, lambda that gets uh, below 1, so everything is looking good. Uh, the orbit has size 14. Let's see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 exactly. It's four periodic as expected. Let me test another one. Again, four periodic. And it's 17 supposed to be the fifth iterate of 19. And it is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it looks like uh, everything is doing what uh, they're supposed to do. Okay, so it looks like these functions are doing what they're supposed to do. Isn't when whenever you, you make any anything, any uh, any code, whenever you write anything, it's always good to test to see if they're working. Okay, so now I'm going to test the conjecture omega equals sigma. Okay, and then I'm going to plot the total stopping time function. Okay, and this is from n from 2 to 1,000. So let's see. Let's see from 100 first. Okay, so this is the plot, and recall that this function sigma, the, the stopping time, is supposed to be equal to the coefficient stopping time. In the coefficient stopping time, we proved here in my notes. Let me see. Where is the coefficient stopping time? Where to define it? 
Yeah, so this is the coefficient stopping time. We proved this lemma 5 here. So this lemma 5 here is saying that the coefficient, sorry, the coefficient stopping time, the, the set omega equals k, is 2 to the k periodic. So if we go back here, that's why we see seeing this structure here. Because if this is, uh, I don't know, this looks like it's a, uh, Eight or yeah, so this would be uh, so if if this is an eight, then this is supposed to be two to the eight periodic. So that's why you're seeing these points here, okay? So these little guys here are supposed to be like one. So this would be like two periodics. That's why you're seeing this, and then you see these other guys here. So let me increase this. Then you see these uh, other guys here, which is this balls here. This, this dots here, and this looks like is a yeah. This looks like it's a two. So this is supposed to be four periodic, and it looks like it is. Okay, so that's why we're seeing a lot of structure. So let's see uh, to a thousand what it looks like. to start seeing those things. So here I'm just summating everything and just summating the absolute value of the total of the stopping time minus the coefficient of stopping time. They're supposed to always be equal and I'm summating everything, I'm always getting zero. So it means that the conjecture is still up to a thousand. So I'll stop doing that for a moment. So let me this and plot a better like say let's say up to ten thousand and see what we get. So you start to see a lot of structure, and that, that lot of structure is because of this function supposed to be this, the, 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 um, the layers of the, the stopping time, that is, uh, the, the set where the stopping time equals k is supposed to be 2k periodic, so that's why you're seeing things which looks regular. Let me do one more. Yeah, so you start to see those lines here, and they're supposed to be there. You know that now. Let me put this back in. Let me do a go back to three. Okay. So the next next test I'm doing here, I'm computing long orbits. So what I'm, what I'm doing is, is I'm starting M with the orbit of the vector of the integer 2 and I'm printing it. And then from i equals 3 to 10,000 what I'm doing is, is I'm collecting f as the orbit, L of f as the length of the orbit and if the length of the orbit is bigger than the previous one I update the length and I print the new length. Okay, so let's see what we get here when we pass. Okay, so so the first largest orbit is a long orbit, which is two, and the next one bigger than two uh, uh, is um, yes, the next one bigger than two is six. And the next one bigger than two is supposed to be seven. And the next one bigger than seven is supposed to be starting with uh, uh, supposed to be a length twelve and starting with seven. Okay, so sorry. So the first one is length two. So this is this number here, and it's the orbit of two. The second one has length six. The second largest is a length six, six and starts with three. So it's three, five, eight, two, four, two, one. And then again, length 7 and starts with 6. So these numbers here, that you have here, these are the, the largest uh, uh, next uh, orbit. Okay. In, in the length of the, the, the next largest uh, orbit. And you can see that it goes... And then up to uh, 10,000, the largest orbit has length 166, okay? So no orbit uh, starting with n less or equal than 10,000 uh, has length la greater than 166.
Oops, so let me put this back to, let's see, uh, um, uh, let's see, it's 100, well, let's see, yeah, let's see 100, okay. Then another task, uh, um, so, so for instance, you can play with this long orbits here to see if you can find any pattern or any special structure in it. This is for you to play. Then the largest value. So here, what I'm doing is that instead I'm computing orbits and computing how how high uh, uh, um, it can get. So. So this will be the large value. So I start with the max of the orbit of two, I print it, and then I start finding the next maxima. So let's see what we get here. So we'll see, so first, the first maxima is in the orbit of two, which is two. Then the second one is in the orbit of three, which gets up to eight. And then the next one is in the orbit of seven, we can get up to 26 and so on. So you see that in the orbit of 27, which is a small number, you can already get up to 4,616 and, and so on. So for instance, this number here is not a coincidental. This is less than a power of two. And whenever you have less than a power of 2, you can get pretty high because you can get to the same power of 3. So you can get to this very large number. And this one, yeah, this one again. Okay, so let me go back to 3. So one thing you can do is that for every, you can do the following plot which is uh, which is um, so let me let me do this let me stop let me not do anything sorry let me just erase this so what you can do is um, you can make a table so list uh, let's say list list plot and then you can make a list plot of the table which is uh, basically simply the max of all i from i let's say from one, let's say from two to a hundred and let's see what we get actually let me let me make this in another place. Let me return this to a hundred, so you have a nice, some nice thing. And let me go to the temporary part here. Let me put it exactly for that. So let me put this. So this is the plot of. Uh, so for each, so these are the integers, and the, in the y-axis you get the maxima uh, in the orbit of that number. So let me go. So let me go up to ten thousand. Okay, so you start seeing some structure there, some lines. Uh, let me try to plot in the same plot. Um, the function. Uh, um, log cx from two to hundred. Oh, I have to close here. I'm just running. Well, I should put another color. I should put uh, plot and style. It would red. I'm not. Oh, I am seeing this thing here very little. So I should go to ten thousand. Sorry. Okay. 
Okay, so maybe it's one over that. Okay, so let me put here um, put five and see what I get. This will take some time. So let me start from uh, 10 cube already. This shouldn't take uh, too long. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if these lines match uh, or at least are always above the line defined by this curve, by this, uh, by this uh, uh, linear plot. And maybe this will take too long. Yeah, you can see that there is a certain line here, which I'm trying to guess this number, I try to guess with this one, but it doesn't look like. Um, and maybe these lines can go into any angle. Okay, maybe, maybe this is something for you. Try to guess in this plot here, what is this angle here? Probably is a trivial answer. I will leave that to you. What is the angle that this graph is doing here below? Why? Um, of, the, oh, of course, this. Um, well, this this guy here, we know what it is. It is a trivial answer. Let me do it with four, so it goes fast. Well, this is the line uh, y equals x. Of course, it has to be. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, well, the, the maxima is always bigger than x, but you can get very close. So it looks like you can get all the range here. You can get you can get the lines here which belong to all the ranges. Maybe maybe there is a threshold that you can't go above, uh, but I don't know. I would doubt it. Maybe you can get in, any line here. But yeah, figure out if there is a threshold here. Or not, if you can get any line here, maybe that's uh, something you can do. Okay, so enough of that. Let's go to the cycle tasks. So I did explain two ways of bounding the lengths of cycles uh, in the collapse map. One was from Crandall's paper, and the other was from Teha's. It looks like the Teha's approach is better. But it's, it, it takes more time to compute here, at least. So let's see. So we tested that up, up to 2 to the 20, what is the test? Which is right here, which took 30 seconds, the collapse conjecture is true. So let's go with that number first. So let's say, uh, so what I'm doing here, so this is the gamma, which is a log 3 over log 2. Or if you want one divided by log of three in base two, or or if you want a log of two in base three, um, a log of three in base two. I don't know. Yeah. So. Um, Yes, so, um, so then you have this m here, which is set up to be 30, and a is the continued fraction expansion of 1 over gamma. Okay, so we proved that in the notes. So let me go to the, pa the page, which was the lemma, so it was already someplace here, which is this lemma. No, this is not the lemma. 
Oh, this was proof of theorem 9, so I have to go to the beginning. So theorem 9 is that uh, if m is a minimal element of a cycle of the length j, then j is bounded by this quantity here, where a gamma minus 1 is exactly uh, uh, where pn over qn are the convergence, the continuous fraction expansion of log 3 in base 2. Okay. Of um, gamma minus one, which is log three in uh, um, base two. So, so yeah. So this this thing here is log three in base two. Um, uh, so gamma, what is what I define as to be. My, uh, 1 over log 3 in base 2, and I need 1 over that number, so that's the gamma. So I'm just trying to follow the notation in my paper, in, in, my, in my notes. Um, and then I'm taking the continuous fraction expansion of this, okay, and then secondly I'm taking Q as the convergence. So you can find the convergence um, um, of a continued fraction, when you, once you have A, the, the continued fraction expansion, you can find the convergence by a recursive relation. The recursive, sorry, the recursive relation is written here, is this recursive relation here. So that's what I did here. So I started with V, which is the temporary variable, as 1, and then um, uh, one which is uh, the first element in this continued fraction here, and then let me do this, and let me do this. Let me just compile it. And you will see. Uh, these two to the forty. Let me put two to the twenty. Yep. So, so this is the continued fraction of uh, one over gamma, um, of exactly. Um, uh, log of 3 in base 2, which is 1 over gamma. Um, and then here is the recursive relation I told you about. And then I return V. So Q is the uh, denominator uh, of the, uh, the convergence of the continued fraction expansion of uh, 1 over gamma. And this is the guy here, so it gets big. Um, and then j is exactly the function j. j is exactly this um, this guy here, j, which will depend. So it's this function here, uh, which is the minimum between these two numbers. So that's my j here. And the statement is that, well, if I test that the collector's conjecture is true up to a certain point, which is definitely true, we test it now up to, up to 2 to the 20, and here I plot uh, the function j with this uh, m equals 2 to the 20, and this is the function, this is the plot, okay? So it always be something like that grows and then decreases just because j is the minimal of something that increases with n and something that decreases with n. So it will always go up and then go down. And then the maxima would be in some point in the middle. In this case, is something like close to 7 or something like that. And then um, I just take the maxima of these numbers and then I take uh, um, uh, the ceiling of this function, so the 306. So this is showing that if I know the collect conjecture is true up to 2 to the 20, then uh, um, uh, the length of uh, any cycle other than, the, the, than the trivial one has to be greater or equal than 306. Okay, so this is what this is showing, and this is due to the, the bound of Crandall. So what Crandall did was also this quoting, Crandall actually wrote a bound which was uh, uh, given by knowing that the conjecture, the collects conjecture is true for up to 2 to the 40, which is this number here. And if you do that, um, what you get is another graph and you get this bound here. Okay, so the collects conjecture 2 being 
uh, being true up to, to 2 to the 40 implies that there is no cycle of uh, other than a trivial one of length less than uh, uh, this number here, than almost like 200,000. And nowadays, by at least by the Wikipedia page, they, they say that it's true up to 2 to the 60. So if you do that with 2 to the 60, you again get another graph which the maxima is in 20. So you see, I don't need to get as many terms, uh, uh, um, uh, too many terms in, in the continued fraction expansion of 1 over gamma because uh, the maxima is already happening like around 20. And that implies that something around um, 300 million, so any uh, loop other than a trivial one has to be, if there is if there is one, has to be greater than this number. So it has to be greater than something like 300 million. Okay, so now let's uh, let's test the the the, the Tejas bound. The so Tejas bound was different. So Tejas, so let me go to the paper. Tejas was uh, different. Tejas bound was where it was more or less here. So it's in, in his observation. As a consequence, if we check that the collapse conjecture is true, or if this uh, uh, stopping time is finite for all n less than some mk, then there is no cycle, other than a trivial one, with length less or equal than k. Okay, so this is the mk function that I wrote here. So, for instance, uh, let's go back here and let's put it to the 20 here, which is what we verified with this mathematical code. And this gives 306. So that means that using Crandall's bound to eliminate cycles of length uh, uh, up to 306, I need to check if the collapse conjecture is true up to 2 to 20. So let me put here 306. So, so this number here would give me the, uh, a number that I would have to check the collapse conjecture up to that number to eliminate cycles of lens less or equal than 306. And this gives just something like uh, uh, 1500, which is much smaller than 2 to the 20. You can even test with another number, let's say 2 to the 40. So that el eliminates cycles up to this number, but what would I have to test with Tejas bound to eliminate, eliminate cycles up to this number? And this would be only up to 150,000, which is much less than two, uh, to the 40. And you can even go higher and you will see that, uh, let's say 50 as a, the final one. So 50 here, you get something like 10 million, but if you put this number here, then you get, it will take uh, some time, yeah, you get something like uh, 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 7 million. So I only need to test up to uh, 7 million to get the same result, which is much better than 2 to the 50. Yes, so so there we go. So this is this this is the bound of Tejas. It looks looks like it's a better bound than Crandall's uh, bound. Although Crandall's bound gives a um, um, it looks. I mean, if if I, if I would put two to the sixty here, the Crandall's bound would compute in a reasonable reasonable time. Almost immediately, immediately, and you get something like 300 million. But if I put this number here, 
I guess this it will take a minute to do this. So let's try to see. I guess it would take like um, a minute to compute. But again, you will get something which is much smaller than 2 to the 60. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I don't think so. I think everything is right here. Let me go back to oops, this computer. Oops. Let me. Oh yeah, it, it went to this part. So it's i gamma, and gamma is gamma is exactly. 1 over log on base 2 of 3, which is exactly what I'm doing here, this log function is exactly the base would be the first entry, which is 2. So it looks it looks okay. So floor of this divided by 2 divided by oops, it's just the other side. Uh, yeah, it looks it looks correct. So it looks like the Terra's uh, bound is better, but uh, may, uh, the problem is it's not easy to come up with some effective. I mean, doing actual com computations in a paper, in a piece of paper, with using Terra's bound. I mean, I think uh, Grendel's bound is much more manageable. And you can actually uh, uh, do some calculations with it. Yeah, it's taking more than a minute, maybe something like three minutes. But anyway, that's that's the end of the file. It's computing, so in a moment we'll compute. That's the end of the file, and. Um, um, and that's it. You can you can download this from my web page, or you can create the file yourself. I mean, the idea basically is just to write some basic functions and try start doing some tests to see if you can spot any pattern that wasn't spotted before, uh, or you can, I don't know, just try to come up with a strategy. But the file is pretty much, um, I guess, pretty much easy to read. So let's just wait some moments more for this. It shouldn't take too much time. And what else? I think that's pretty much it. I mean, the rest you can do yourself. It's always nice to, to learn some computer language. Um, um, in Mathematica seems to be like the first uh, natural step. So it's always nice to, it's very intuitive. Uh, uh, programming uh, language and, and it also has uh, a lot of help online. You can find um, basically whatever question you have. You can find you can find uh, you can find it on Google or something like that. Um, let me wait just some. I mean, already it was already like four minutes almost. I think last time it wasn't something like six minutes was saving. Um, so let's see. Yeah, maybe I will stop this thing. Let me stop this thing.
yeah, import it. Okay, so and there you go. I mean, you have fun, and I will try to update this file along the way, along the lectures. Maybe you can do, we can do some more nice experiments. And that's it for today. Thank you. Okay.